glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. To God be the glory. Our first song, we begin our morning service by singing number 95 from the Pentecostal Kingdom. I am determined to hold out to the end.
across the world about all the crises that are happening, including the coronavirus. And all of us are going to pray today. Mighty God, blessed Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our soon coming King, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah that brings every chain. God, you are awesome in this place. You are mighty. You are wonderful, God. You shed your blood for our lives, God Almighty. And all we have to do is lift our faith in you because you are the rock of our salvation. The solid ground that the church was built on, mighty God. Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us, mighty God, to continue to thank you. No matter what our situations may be, mighty God, help us, God, to thank you for the trials, the testings, the temptations, and the storms of life, God Almighty. Lord God Almighty, when we can give you the praise, God, you will deliver us, God, in the situations. Jesus, glory be to your Jesus. 
Jesus. God, you will provide for us, Michael. You provide for the widow and her son, God. You will provide for us in times of need, oh God. Our next song is 100. Remain standing, please. Our next song is 153. Glory to God, hallelujah, for the sacred apostle. Amen.
to the end. To God be the glory. When you find it, please say amen. Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Acts 27, verse 13 to the end. Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be really responsibly. Oh, God, you are awesome. Do we all find it? Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed close by Crete. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Which when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship, and fearing, sorry, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we be and the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when the sun or stars in the middle appeared, and no small tempest in the all that we should be saved was to be taken away. But after a long unabstained, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have heard unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained his harm and lost. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up down in Adira, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to be off the ship, they had made up the boat to the sea, and their father had to go to the car and the said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat, and the earth And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you and when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixty souls. And when they had eaten enough, they had the ship and passed out in the And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek in a shore, in the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchor, they committed themselves into the sea, 
And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forefront stopped fast and remained unmovable, but the inner part was broken with the violence of the waves. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves from the, into the sea and get to the land. And for the foreign lands, and the rest of the board, and some broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all of the land. To God be the glory. Be the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. We'll sing this morning at 104 from the best of all. Jesus, I'll go through with thee.
that's what you're going to say. You're just going to tell them and testify. Because ultimately, he's not the only one who can help us, 
how to save us in this crisis. I don't know what crisis there was in the time of the Chronicles, but it's written there, if my people who are called by my name, please note, my people who are called by my name, that means whoever they were, or God's people they were a selected number, would humble themselves and pray and see my face, then will I heal from heaven, will heal their land. And it was their land that was sick, but the condition that existed on the land. And please note all the singular pronouns. My people call by my name, humble themselves, pray, I will hear from him. Are we there? The Lord bless you. Well, there are a few announcements I have for you. And the first one, the second one, to many, but some might take the advice. Our dear beloved sister, Alma Matthews King, said goodbye on Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning of last week. Sister Alma really gone. I saw Missionary Smith on Friday. And she said, are you really gone? I mean, I believe. But it is a nice way to go. I would have loved to go that way. She was in church Sunday. She was at noon day prior Monday. She was there Tuesday. And she left from there to the hospital. And that's it. Gone. What a nice way to go. Well, again, our prayers are with you. We know your feelings, but it's a nice way to go. And very, it's hard for those who are there. But for the one who is gone, what a lovely flight. No way to get to the airport, no way to you know, but you have to feed you, push you, bathe you, no stop. You just break out of this, out of this, and in of that. So our prayers are with the family, and we'll hear further on that much. All right? Now, this morning we were gathered for education hall when I came. Uh, there were a few brethren here, and it was three minutes past ten, but they started to sing. And the singing was sweet, and there was an anointing. And I prayed for a long time, seeing the Lord, with this anointing here, what should I do with it? Because this is not the wild stop and start the education. What do I do with it? And he told me what to do. And I asked the brethren, he said, we're going to do X, Y, Z in prayer. We are going to, we are going to say again on prayer. And the Lord stayed with us. And the result of that education of prayer is that Brother William Tristan yes, Williams of the Holy Ghost, yes, Brother Canyon Pastley of the Holy Ghost, and Brother Leon Bob of the Holy Ghost. Yes, I want to tell me, it will be hard to believe. <laughs> and it was just the group of us and everybody who came in afterwards just join in and just start to pray and worship God. Mm -hmm. And everybody just thought they could. And that was it. God is a wonder. He may not come in water, but you be there. There. No, we would have wanted him to show up now. But we told him we'll be here from 10. So he showed up in that space and did what he wanted to do. And we are addressing three males. Three males. 
But um, I was told that before her death, she quietly told her sister, when I die, please carry my gosh out. Now she won't tell him on that because of the mother's strong pull on her and would have taken her away she goes. But she told her sister to tell her. So mama called me and said to me, that is her request. I said to her, care her. I will not charge you. I know the circumstance. So it will be on the 5th of um, April and we are going to do it at 1 o'clock because we had one before at 2. Okay? So please serve me. Uh, if there are any changes, we'll be advised accordingly. But for now, we ask just his body seat. She was as Dan, Dan put a lovely tribute on, on Facebook. Is it Facebook or what? But of how manly she was. And when you don't see money, she had come to you. And she in the hospital, I was one of the people she called over to me. She said, see me here, sir. And she said, oh, I saw two days before she passed in a wheelchair at the gas station. I didn't, I didn't even see her. She called out as usual. She called me because it was something that happened that caused her to. Anyway, God understands. So that is that. Am I leaving anything? Okay. I think I've covered. So then, we go back over, and we just remind you that we'll meet with Nurse Rappington to speak to us on Wednesday night on Prospect Pleasing, and that there will be no other service for the week in the night, unless the Lord does something, and that our brothers, we are so happy for you. Right of us, pray for a mayor, Christ is very anxious. If, if God, if I had my way, Mother said, Lord, I don't them, my house keep first. But, <laughs> uh, but he did it his way. And uh, we are going to pray for right of us that we get to be as a daughter who is an apostle, and she's anxious to hear. She was the one that witnessed him and make sure he baptized here, although his partner in life is of a different denomination. But she makes sure and she's always inquiring if that you know, not get the thing yet. So I pray that that you get the thing. Okay? God bless everybody. Thank you.
Brothers, not by the Holy Ghost this morning. Could you stand? Hallelujah. You're going to be just saying something, testifying, just giving God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the Lord? Wait for the ball. Go ahead, sister. Praise the Lord. Where's the mic? Where's the mic? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God. I was in a situation where I was wondering what's the next move because I didn't know where to turn, what to do. I went to bed and I received, I would say it's a vision, not a dream. It was like I'm working somewhere and it's like because they say you're supposed to love where you work, right? So, I received an info that someone was in need of workers. So, I went there and I was redirected to another company where they were saying that they're in need of workers. So, I went there, no, no interview, well, on the spot interview, no resume, no application, and the supervisor told me to come in the next day after they inter interviewed me on the spot. After that, I went to my bed again, got another vision that I was working somewhere even better. So, I would say all of this vision and all of this process was based on yeah. strong faith, always praying to the Lord. So, point of my story is never give up. Or when it seems like there's no way out of the money, keep praying to God. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Lord. I don't know how to express this. I feel extra free. I just know that I have to give thanks to God each and every time. I was in a situation I need someone to pay it. I suppose it would be a bit Friday. And Thursday, I didn't have the first job. And as I reach out my work spot Friday morning, I get a job with the money to cover the exam. Check out the video. And one more thing this morning. I suppose it would be my homework for business people. <laughs> and I take it up this morning. And there's two words I suppose to push. I heard a voice and put it That's not your job for a two year. Take up the Bible, read the Psalms, put on my shirt. So just I want to say thanks to Jesus and thanks to everyone for giving me the support. I need to get all of this this morning. Hallelujah. You know, this morning I wake up, I decide not to come to church this morning, but I, <laughs> but I end up here. Praise glory to God. Uh, but I don't know, I just feel brand new, feel light. Yes. You know, it's like a new world. Amen, Jesus. brother. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
that Jesus fit three persons of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ. In the education of my heart, I can say to Jesus, Lord, no let us thy servant depart in peace. For my eyes of the glory. Leads, we're going to jump over to 28 and take a little bit of the 28. But 27, 27, verse 24. Yes, 23. 22, why not? <laughs> and now, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. What of the ship? For there stood by me this night the angel of God. And he clarified that now he's not serving the angel of God. He's serving God, whom I serve and whose I am. Saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all of them that say with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Mm. I didn't even see that. For I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told to me. For wherefore, saints of God, be of good cheer, for we believe God. Amen. Everything is going to be all right. That's my topic. Everything is going to be all right. I thought about when I was told that I was going to be the speaker. And I have been preaching all week, most of the week, elsewhere. And I said, I wrote up a message and I think that this is it, man. This is the message. But as I was driving yesterday, thinking about church and Lord switched it to this one. And my God, my God. To be contextually correct, you know I'm struggling, don't really want to do that. But to be contextually correct, we position Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, on a boat in the midst of a storm. And everybody wants to jump off. We picture the man of God, along with a few other men of God, with some ungodly people in a boat, on the sea, on a ship that was doomed to destroy by the high waves and the high winds. And everybody wants to jump off. And the man of God said, don't jump off. Stay on board. Because I was in contact with Jesus. And he told me to tell you, if you stay on board, hallelujah. No, this came about because Paul was living and preaching Jesus. As a consequence, he was persecuted. He was beaten, tied up, put in jail, taken out of jail, beaten, left half dead, but he kept on doing his work for Jesus. And when he appeared before, I think it was Agrippa, and he declared himself to be a Roman citizen, they said, he said, I want to go before Caesar. And they allowed him as a prisoner, tied him up, chains, put him on a boat and said, you, so you want to go to Caesar? To Rome you shall go. And that on his way, as a man of God, the scripture and the text said, they stopped at different places. But because he, even though he was in bonds, you know what bonds mean, right? Handcuffs, chain. Even though he was a prisoner, he was still in connection with God. And the scripture said that when he, they reached to a particular place, I think 
let me find it just to make sure that you hear exactly what I'm going to say. He said to them, God told me, verse, verse 9, verse, verse, verse 9 of the journey, and verse 10 of the journey, Paul stood up and said to them, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, none of this laying and ship, but also of our lives. In other words, we're saying to them, stay right here. Don't go any further. There is a storm coming. You know God is talking. And all we have to just listen to God. And somebody said, God is not talking. And somebody counteracted that by saying, God is talking. Because when the preacher preaches, or preaches, God is talking. And all we have to do is take the words of God as dished out from God through the preacher. And if we take them and apply them and live by them, then we will miss some of the things that we go through. Here one man said, Oh, what needless pain to bear. This is one all because we don't take it to God in prayer. Jesus said, If you hear my words, unto them and apply them, live by them, you will like unto the man who builds his house upon the rock. Because whether you build a house upon the rock or the sand, storms is going to come. But when we have the word, the preached word, the written word, and the preached word, I call it a preached word. Because God sometimes takes a word, we read the scripture so many times, and we don't see, but when, when the preacher looks at it, God has a way of resurrecting that word and making it into a, a rhema, a live word. So sometimes when you get a word from God, that word from God is, is a now word, a word that to prevent us from going into or, or, or going into some direction that will cause hurt. So when we come to church, it's not just to put on black or white and pretty up and, to, and, and, and white and common, and, and it's like a social gathering. It's to worship God and to get a word. Amen. Because God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Amen. He can see around the corner. One point when somebody was telling me about a car that has a light that can show around the corner. And I said, wow. I said, I know God who can see around the corner. So he knows tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen next week. He knows what's going to happen next year. He knows what's going to happen the other year. And so he said to you right now, to you and I, when you get the words, uplift them. And sometimes you may not feel, I, I, am, I am bubbling right now, but I feel as I'm just wrong, I'm left, so I'm, I'm going to bubble. Sometimes you feel like, this is not for me. But my late pastor, Richard, Obi Richard said, put them in your kit bag. Put them in your kit bag. You know, the traveling bag with people used to walk with them. Now, these young people are walking with the knapsack everywhere they go in the garbage bag. I said, hey, man, where you go with the bag? Keep it in your bag. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, ah, it's a figurative language. Store it up. Because when Jesus gives it to you three days early, two weeks early, because when you need it, you remember the word was preached last week or two weeks ago, and you can run. I said, God, you were you're preparing for this. And I said, happened to you. You get a word, and at the time when the word came, it means nothing. But when you find yourself in a situation, it was the word that you got a month before just came up strong. And he said, the preacher preached, and you remembered it. And thank God. So these words, when God sent these words, the people said, oh, oh this man, this Paul, he's a prisoner. Lock him up. Don't listen to him. They didn't, the Bible said they didn't listen to him. They kept on saying it. Bishop just spoke to me a while ago that they, he, he, he preached a message some years ago that don't leave Crete. Because Crete is a safe heaven. Hallelujah, safe harbor where there's no matter there are some harbors that there's no matter how the hurricane blow, the, 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 the wave somehow don't, don't come across those 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 there's some rocks way out the reef or what you call it? Barret. He said barret. That's break the waves and then you have a safe place. There might be one or two places like that in Guadalupe. 
Hallelujah to God. So Paul admonished them, don't leave this place. And because people have neglected the world, and because people have not taken heed to the word that is being preached, the word of God, which is a light and a lamp, a direction, the word of God, if it is heard, received, and applied, it gives light. Because on this journey, there are pitfalls, potholes, bumps, direction you need, many different roads. But the word of God is a light and a lamp and a direction. When it is given, it shows the light. And you say, oh, God said, don't no step there, sir. When you look down, step around. When you look down, you go around the corner. When you, you see him looking tall, dark, and handsome and lovely. But when the word of God comes, you say, uh-uh. The word of God just I just got a word. As much as you look good, the word just told me to leave you alone. Take up your clothes like Joseph and run out of here. Glory to God. The word of God tells us who to marry. Where to live, who, how to live, what to live with, how, where, how, when, why. The word of God is everything. And this time what we see is that the crisis because men have been neglecting the word of God. No, my, one of my, the subtopic is Christ in the crisis. And so I looked at the word crisis and it says a time of intense difficulty or danger. I look at the crisis, look, one of the crises that we're faced with, I don't mean Mr. Trump said that, a little bit blown out of proportion because the common cold or the flu has killed more every year than, 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 than this one. But what it's going to cause us to do is to be more uh, clean. Wash your hands regularly. When you sneeze, you sneeze, where you sneeze, and how you sneeze, and you know, all of these things, these things happen. I remember one time, I used, years ago, 20 years ago, I used to see Bishop Spray, Carastere, and Carahandles. If we had been practicing all of these things, you know, a lot of things would be just easy. Amen. So, crisis. What John F. Kennedy said about crisis, he said, if crisis was written, the word crisis was written in Chinese, it would have two meanings. One, danger, and the other, opportunity. So right now we are faced with danger, but it depends on how you look at it. As the church, we look at it, of course we have to be responsible by following the, the right things to do, the, the social space and the hand washing and the, and the sanitizing and all those things. We have to look at that opportunity to get people to hear something. But as a, a, a danger, but the opportunity is that we have to tell somebody that there is a word, there is a God who can keep you, who can save you from whatever is happening. And even if you die in it, you go to heaven. So it's an opportunity. I watch the, 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 the first responders. Have you ever heard of the first responders? When, when hurricane and, and, and earthquake and tornado come and tear up places, what they do is they, they run in, they, they, they be the first, they call them the first responders. They run in as fast as they don't want to go to before them. They go in with clothes, they go in with medicine, they go in with food, they go in with temporary shelter, and as soon as they get warm and they're very full, they put the Bible in your hand. It's an opportunity to get people to see Jesus. Every crisis, every situation is an opportunity to tell somebody that there is a Jesus who can help us to work around the storm. Every time we get a chance to this, it is not the church shouldn't be backing up, the church shouldn't be locking down, but the church will, will have using the correct uh, sanitizing and health principles, but we should use in the Bible, and I saw one of them, the Red Sea, Exodus 14, my God, the children of Israel coming up, out of bondage, heading to freedom, and they went, I thought God manipulated this, and said, go the way of the Red Sea, I think that's what the Bible said, and they went there, and on their journey, dancing and singing and shouting, here comes Pharaoh behind them, they didn't even see the Red Sea, 
seen yet. They were so happy shouting and dancing, and they didn't even see the Red Sea looming ahead of them. But all of a sudden, they heard a sound of an army approaching from behind. And then they looked behind, and then they looked in front. The Red Sea, blackened. Somebody said 10,000 feet deep, blackened. Look behind them. Fearless army. Fear who held them in slavery for how many years? Who was a, a killer? Who was a who just lost his first son? Who was angry? Who was mad? If he caught them, he that he was not only running them down to bring them back in slavery, but I believe he was angry and mad and he was running them down. Crisis! What did they do with that crisis? They called upon Moses, and Moses called upon God. What I said that is what we have now is crisis. church and the church cried to God and God said build a serpent of brass and every man that is bitten you just look at it and you will be healed hallelujah to God God has a way of responding in crisis Luke 8 the disciples were on a boat Jesus gave them instruction to cross over and in the middle of the sea here come the wind and the way Wait, 
didn't call, everybody was hungry. What he called his hunger fasting. Everybody was hungry, but he was in tune with God. In the midst of the storm, we have to be in tune with God. In the midst of the crisis, we have to be in tune with Jesus. What was happening? All they were waiting for to jump off, to commit suicide, and to die. But the Bible says that there was a man on board who was in tune with God. And he stood up right down before they were going to go crazy. He stood up just before they were about to commit suicide. He stood up. I see the church getting ready to stand up right in the midst of this crisis, right in the midst of this darkness. The church is standing up to tell the world that there is a God named Jesus who can protect you. I see the
Psalm 91. Please turn your Bible to Psalm 91.
their faith in you. And help them, God, to see you in this crisis. Not just to see this crisis, but the God in the crisis. We stretch our hands to you, God, and help us, God, to tell somebody that you're still alive and well, and you do marvelous things among your people. God, we bless you. We lift you up, and we thank you for being with us as we say thanks in Jesus' name. And I believe that coming from our bishop, which is a blessing, he'll speak over us. The Lord bless Bishop. Bless the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. First of all, we are going to look to the Lord. And we are going to sing to him. I know unto him. Who is able to do. Exceeding.